Peugeot Berlingo, Citroen Partner, front brake pads. Let's do it now. Let's first show you, as I usually do, some tools you want handy for doing this job. Tools to do the job, other than a 17mm socket to remove the wheel, which you might have already thought about, jack, axle stand, a light is handy. I've got a wire brush of some sort on a drill or on a handle, a lever or a good screwdriver, a bit of scotch pad or a bit of sandpaper, light sandpaper. Brake clean's handy with a rag, obviously brake pads, that's the part number if you're interested. A bit of copper grease or ceramic grease, uh, and then we've got a little hammer, and then the most important part of the whole process is this 7mm Allen key, hex head, whatever you want to call it, but it's a 7mm with a ratchet and a torque wrench. Not absolutely necessary, but if you were that way inclined, then there's one there. Okay, let's get to doing these pads. As you can see, we've got the vehicle raised and supported safely with an axle stand. We've got the wheel off, 17mm uh, nuts, uh, bolts. And then I've turned the steering to the direction you'll be doing. So if it's left, turn the steering to the left. If you're working on the right-hand side, turn the steering to the right. That gives you proper access to the caliper. It's just easier to work on, really. First thing we're going to do is remove our lovely clip here. Then we're going to be taking these two dust covers off. So you can either just use your thumbnail, give them a squeeze, put them out, flat blade screwdriver, do the same job. And they look like that. Then you'll need your 7mm hex or Allen key, probably the one tool. You might. So we're just going to loosen those off now. Like that they won't be very tight and if they are make sure your socket and tool whatever it is is nicely seated and square in there before you loosen it off so you don't round it off and you'll be in a world of pain so let's zip those out sometimes they'll just spin straight out and this time not so much ah that's how they want to come out so they should look like that, and on this vehicle they're both identical. Some vehicles have a different length, but on this one, the same. There we go. Okay, before we remove the caliper, which is now loose, we're going to squeeze the piston back in. Now it's worth checking that your brake fluid isn't at maximum right now, because you should do this, the brake fluid will just go absolutely everywhere, which is probably what's about to happen to this one. So with the screwdriver, we're going to push the piston back now. like that until basically you can't get the piston back anymore and you'll feel it stop there we go now the caliper will be really easy to lift off like this now I wouldn't leave it hanging for long periods of time but for a short period of time you can leave it to hang there I'll pull the old pad off note they've got these little clippy things that aside pull the other pad out of the way not too bad this side the other side was on the metal there we go it's worth checking the pad um, wearing as you just maybe noticed the brake pads had worn evenly both sides uh, which is a good sign uh, plus the sliders came out easy if all of those things weren't true you might have an issue where there's a slider all these rubbers have split etc etc um, and you have to check maybe the calipers seized etc but this is all good so far Next job, I'm going to clean this up with a wire wheel, make it look all nice and clean, and then I'm just going to remove any loose metal. I'm reusing the discs here because there's hardly a lip. If you've got a major lip here, they're very, very worn out, please replace the disc with the pads. That would be a different episode, but it's not much more work. Um, more expense, obviously, a little bit more work, uh, but these will go with another set of pads. What you could do, if there was a little bit of loose metal, just tap it to get it free. Get all the loose metal off or spin the disc while the edge of a, of a claw hammer or a screwdriver just to remove any bits of debris uh, that have built up over time. But these actually discs are in good condition, ready to be used for another set of pads. Some people probably wouldn't even bother cleaning those off, but we have cleaned them up with a wire wheel on a, on a drill and a scraper and then washed them off with some brake clean. Next things we're going to do is 
to make sure these things are sparkling clean. This is the way we do that, or that I do that. We have different techniques. I'm sure you have your own techniques as well. I'm just going to show you my technique and then you can ignore it. I get my drill and very gently put the chuck on the threads. I get a little bit of scotch pad like this. A little brake clean on it. You could put WD-40 on it, but I just put it straight with the brake clean. See how that comes up. Look at that. Like new. Oh, shiny. Right, do that with the other one, and then we're getting ready for it to put all back together. Right, yeah, that's right. With our caliper, uh, you noticed earlier, they clip into these calipers. Um, some not all vehicles do that. We're just going to get a little bit of copper slip, copper grease, whatever you want to call it. I like to use them in the tube. I just find them get just less greasy, less my pots get ruined often when stuff gets dropped in them. Put a little bit of grease on all the tangs and on the little side sections where it's going to be rubbing and sliding like that. And then a couple of blobs just where the piston will be sliding. And I get my finger and just spread that out a little bit. Just where the edge of this piston is going to be spinning and sliding. There we go. And then I keep my left hand nice and clean. That means there's no copper grease on the pad surface. Wipe my hands down and then get the pad in to the caliper. Nice and square, firm squeeze, and she's in. Just keep an eye that there's not bits of uh, copper slip that have uh, come astray, just like there was a little bit there. And we can uh, put the other pad in now. Just the ears. And then. Once we've slid the pad in, like that, we can then put a little blob on both sides where the caliper will be squeezing. This reduces um, all sorts of things like vibration and, and seizing. I don't like to put too much though because the dirt does get stuck in on them. Okay, and then with a little, just a little bit of grease on my fingers, I'd like to put a little bit on the sliders that and a little bit on the threads just a little bit and they get squeezed in to the back of the caliper right there's our sliders we've slid them into the caliper ready to go calipers ready to go everything ready to go well let's put it back together then so I can do this with just one hand it's not too difficult you bring the caliper around slide it back on now the tricky bit is going to get me these threads started so just have a feel by hand you'll feel that they just slot into the threads and then by hand don't use a gun or anything start the threads going so you just want to get them started by hand before you might use any silly big guns and then we're going to talk them to spec So these are 27 newton meters, give or take one or two, I'm sure. There we go, already done them up tight enough. They really don't need very much. Yep, just in there, perfect. And then we get our caps. Don't forget your little caps. Push them on, like so. Nice and tidy, looking good. And let's bring it round to this clip here, which is always the fun bit. But basically, I always try and get one side in just right. That, nice and seated and then the other side I sort of start it push the edge of that clip just started on there and then a gentle tap with a small hammer or the end of a screwdriver or your thumb and that gets it seated home nicely right what we're going to do now is pump up the brake nice and firmly uh, and then spin the wheel turn the disc make sure it doesn't bind and then especially so there's a bedding in period on uh, old pads and new discs uh, old discs, sorry, new pads. But the same would be true though if you had new pads and new discs. But basically, you want to go and uh, go down the road nice and gently, brake quite firmly from about 20 to 30 miles an hour three times. I do that in a row and then I drive for about half a mile to let the brakes cool down 
and I'll repeat the process 20 to 30 miles an hour three times and then drive half a mile to let the brakes cool down and then I'll brake quite firmly some say 40 or 50 and just make sure it feels good and I'm confident and uh, then there's no issues but just make sure when you do do some hard braking initially you do drive a little bit afterwards to let the brakes cool down and you don't glaze up your new uh, brakes final thing I usually do actually just before I take a test drive is I'll be using the brake clean just to make sure my fingerprints on the disc whether they're new or old is all cleaned off inside and outside uh, and it all feels good make sure you pump up your brakes so thanks for watching Piggy Bear I hope this has been helpful with changing your brake pads if you don't feel competent don't do it take it to a pro this is your brakes this is your life. Thanks very much. I'm out.